Hey, Chris from Key Farm. So a while back, I started a heavy oak farm table for my dining room, and it's kind of just been sitting around and it needs to be finished. So that's what we're doing today. All right, the first video was on the bottom. The bottom hasn't changed any. I'll put the link to that video right here, but let's see what we got to do to the top. All right, so the top is going to be these three boards, two big boards and then this uh, smaller board in the middle. So the way we attach all these is we got these marks here and then an adjoining mark on each board. So we're going to take this jig, which is just a piece of angle iron, and I'll put that on there to where we can see the line down in the center. Then we'll drill it with this. And these pins, this is a kit that you can get from Harbor Freight. And we'll get everything aligned on pins and we'll dry fit it. And if the dry fit looks good, at that point we'll glue everything and we'll put it all together with long bar clamps. So let's drill this first one. All right, so for the first one, all I do is put my jig down over the line and look, that one's not quite perfect, but we can shave a little off or do whatever we got to do to make the pins. What I'll do is I'll glue all the pins in one side, I'll dry fit the other side, and then when it all lines up, and look, sometimes it's a little bit of an issue getting everything to line up, but it can be done. So I'm going to do all that and then we'll check back. All right, so I've drilled all the holes, and now I'm starting to glue these dowel pins in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue both sides of this small piece in the middle, and then I'll make these pieces fit. And sometimes you may have to waller out a hole a little bit, or you may have to shave the side of a pin off. But with a mallet and enough pressure from the clamps, you can get it all to line up. All right, now that I got it something like this, I got it where all of them will slide together. This one here is a little off. I shaved a little off the pin and I wallered out the hole a little so it will go together. So now I'm going to take everything back apart. I'm going to put a good bead of glue down each side of these and then put the bark clamps on. All right. So, it took a little bit of motivation with that hammer, but we got it all put together. It's all on pins, so no matter what happens, it's not going to raise up and down. Um, when it dries, I can take the clamps off, and all of these little ridges right here, we'll belt sand those out. Everything is a little long, so the end will be trimmed. Both ends will be trimmed. And you may notice that it's got kind of a little dish to it. The only way we can get rid of that is with a very large planer, and I don't have a very large planer. So, we might notch out under here to make it fit better, or we might just go with it and deal with it. I don't know. But, that's as far as we can go right now. Alright, so I'm back out here in the workshop slash man cave slash place where I put a lot of my junk. So, I've been working on the table. So the other day, we got the table fastened together. Uh, all I've done since then is I've come through with a plane, and I've took off some of the ridges right here. And, if you'll remember, these pieces were really dished out. Now, uh, this wood came from the farm. So, it's not like I can just go get more wood, because we want the dining room table made out of wood from the farm. So, I have to use this dished out wood, and I've just got to fix it. So what I did is, I always put this band on the end, and I countersink all of these lag screws in here. Oh my gosh, who have we got crying out here? Seriously, bro? He just woke up. So anyway, um... Anyway, this gives it kind of an old-time rustic feel, and maybe even older, you know, back when stuff was, you know, bolted together and really built well. 
So anyway, um, this band, this edge will all get sanded. You can see where it's glued on. All of this will get hit with the belt sander, the outside. Everything's going to get hit with the belt sander. These will be trimmed off and they'll match the live edge on both sides. And it is the same thickness, so uh, there's a little bit of an edge right here that I'll have to take care of. But this side was dished out really, really bad. So I did it first off camera because it required a lot of clamps. The other side's bad, but not as bad. And I'm going to show you how to put this piece on the other side. I had to let him in here to help. Hey, Snap. So, and there's another one. So y'all are going to come out here in all this sawdust and then track it all through the house. All right, good plan. All right, you see how wavy this edge is right here? Here's the deal. We're going to put this strip, excuse me, Basset Hound. We're going to put this strip on there the best that we can. And we'll push and pull this with C-clamps and we'll get it straighter. And then we'll plane what we can plane and belt sand what we can't. So that's what we're doing now. Oh, um, I've already countersunk some of these holes. Two more will get added. That center one goes right there. Um, there will end up being another one in the middle of those two and another one in the middle of those two to match the other side. And I had to put those in on the other side to um, help pull it to the wood. So this, have I already cut that? I think I have already cut that. I still see my line a little bit right there. I'll have to fix that. But I'm going to attach this onto that. All right, so I've sanded that down some where it all lines up better. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this thing, and I'm going to put that center lag bolt in, and probably one there, and then I'm going to pull the edges down with C-clamps a little bit. I can't pull them down all the way. I thought about turning this over and setting the skill saw about three quarters deep in there and ripping them, so they'd fold, but I was afraid that the crack would, or the top would crack, and I don't want that. All right, so anyway, we're working it out. Look, at the end of the day, it's going to be a rustic table. It'll be fine. All right, so I got one lag bolt in it. This is all close enough that I can straighten it up with the belt sander. I'm probably going to go ahead and put this one in. Uh, I'm going to bend that down and put that one in. And then I'll straighten this out with a C-clamp. And that one may actually, well, when I fix this one, this one will probably get off. But anyway, all I got to do is drill them in with that. There's my lag bolts. By the way, if you want to get the zinc off, uh, white vinegar for about a day. And then get them wet with just regular tap water. And they'll rust over like that. And then they look old. All right, so I straightened that side up just like that. A couple of C-clamps, a piece of wood, and it's pretty close to even. Got a little bit of a crack right there that I wish that I didn't have, but it's there and I'm not going to do anything about it. And I got a little bit of a crack right there that I wish I didn't have, but <clears throat> I'm not going to do anything about it either. So now uh, I'm going to cut these ends off with the jigsaw and... Take that belt sander and do a lot of sanding. All right, so I got those cut off. It's not terribly important that they're exactly with the live edge. I just got close with the jigsaw because belt sanders are amazing. All right, so I'm gonna clear everything off and start sanding. All right, so this side's put on. Three lag bolts there, three lag bolts there. One in the center. And the way I fixed those ridges is I just knocked the corner off of them and made them, made them smooth. I've done a tremendous amount of sanding. I've rounded up the corners. I can't get rid of that crack. Mm -mm -mm. And I got one there. And I know what I did wrong. I sanded the corners with a belt sander and I shouldn't have done it. I didn't do it on this end. 
and I don't have any crack. Well, anyway, there it is. It still needs a little bit more sanding. I mean, it's real smooth, but this one here is the spot that was dished so bad. Got rid of most of the ridge right there. Like I said, it's a rustic table. It's looking pretty good. All right, y'all. So I think I left off when I was putting this one on. We cut the ends off. Yeah, it's dark. I got it outside. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, still got a crack there. I don't like, but this end looks pretty good. So there you have it. It's solid as a rock. It'll never come apart. There's the bottom. Now I've spent, I don't know, a couple of hours sanding it probably. And I have it out here because I just blew it off with the air compressor. And I got inside the grain, all these little spots, so it'll soak up the stain really well. And that's the next stop. Start hitting it with some stain. And we'll have a finished product pretty soon. All right, so I got my coat of stain on it. It's probably only getting one coat because with stain, I don't think you do multiple coats. Um, I do have to run along here where I got inside the counter sinks and it's leaking out a little bit. And the table underneath, I got to turn it upside down and get all the nooks and crannies. But there it is. So I'm editing the video and it has occurred to me that I didn't show you how I attached the top to the bottom frame. So we're doing that now. First of all, I used these short lag screws because they have to run through a piece of oak up into the tabletop. So when I built the frame, I added these pieces. And then you just gotta verify that your screw is not longer than this and this. So I did that, and then I held this up to a drill bit and I put a piece of tape on the drill bit. And when I drilled up in here, I just drilled to the tape to ensure I wouldn't come out the other side. And then you just pop a washer on there and run those up in there. And it's got six in it and it's never coming loose. All right. All right, y'all, it's done. And it's even got a matching bench and the dishwasher's running. I'm sorry about that. So um, when it comes to staining and it comes to polyurethane, you pretty much just read the can. You, uh, you stain it, you wait eight hours. Can I help you, sir? Anyway, you wait eight hours, you make sure that there's not much residue then you go over it with polyurethane and then you take really fine sandpaper and after about four hours you can sand your polyurethane and then you put another coat on and then your final coat, however many coats you do, this has only got two, you go over it with cardboard and you get a really good finish and the whole plan for this was to have these two old chairs on one side which I really think we need to stain them to match the color. We just haven't done it yet. And then a matching bench on the other side. And this is the same log, the same tree. And even the underside is um, got the live edge on it on both sides. Look at you, look at that, the final. And this looks a little rough. We could have done a little bit more sanding on it, but it's pretty smooth. So anyway, um, it's supposed to be a little bit rough, a little bit rustic. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And keep in mind, this was made with just common household tools. Skill saw, jigsaw, bar clamps, drills, 
you know, I don't even have a planer. And uh, we managed to make something that's going to last a long, long time. Um, in the end cards here, I'm going to put the original video. If you haven't seen it yet, you can see me build the bottom frame. And uh, watch some of these other videos. Hey, love God, love people, and keep watching Key Farm. Bye.